Welcome to this video on creating a calendar of events in Microsoft Bookings. So you might want to use this to create a calendar of overview sessions or a training calendar, which is something I've used Microsoft Bookings to do in the past in a previous role or just any other sort of bookings. I'm going to show you how to set up the booking page, how then to set up the services or the high level events and then how to build out the sessions so that people can book on those sessions. So it's not just opening your calendar for people to book when you're free. It's actually defining when those sessions are and then opening them up to X amount of people. So there's a number of steps we need to go through in this video. So I'm going to create a new shared booking page. Now, just be really careful when you do these. Only your administrator can delete them. So if you look, I've got my personal booking pages on top where I open up my calendar for people to book in some short sessions, nice and easy. And that's worked around when I am free and when I define those plots of time. But to do this, I need a shared booking page. So I'm going to create a brand new booking page. And I'm going to create it from scratch. Now, you can clone an existing booking page if you want to. But just in this video, I'm going to create it from scratch to show you how I would set it up. And I'm going to name it. I'm going to call it System tr Systems Training Courses. Because it's all about IT training here. And I can add a logo if I want to. I'm going to select a business type of education. And you can see I've got my business hours there. Don't worry too much about that because I'm going to set specifically my sessions based on the events. So this is not someone someone's going to be able to randomly put in my diary. I am going to define when these courses are going to be run. And if you don't deliver courses, but you do deliver sessions of something or you deliver overviews or anything else, this might become really useful and helpful for you. So I'm going to click on next. And then I am just going to invite staff. Now, if there's more than you, if there's more than one person who's going to be running these events, running these sessions, then you need to make sure everyone has access because you're going to allocate the sessions to the individual, almost like trainers. Let's assume this is training courses we're talking about. So you need to have trainers in the system. And I'm going to click on next. And then I can set up a service, but I can do this later. So it's telling me I need to set up a service. And in my example, this is going to be a training event. So this might be a getting started event. And then I might have events that are deep diving into certain applications or parts of the system. Again, I can see my office hours. I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm just going to click next and then finally define who is going to be able to book onto my sessions. So are they always going to be logged into the network? And is it just going to be people in my organization or anyone who has access to the self-service page? Because they might not be logged into the network. I'm just going to go as people in my organization right now because it's an internal set of training courses. And I'm going to click on create. And that's just going to set up my booking page. Now, obviously, I can go back and change all of that stuff later on if I want to. So don't worry too much about defining certain rules and stuff. If you want to go back and change it, then you can. You can see you've already got a bookings page there and you can share that. But I haven't set up anything yet. So let's click on get started. And I can now see this is my page. Now, it does look a little bit complex. I can see a calendar in the middle. It's defining their looking at my actual personal calendar and when I am free and stuff. I've got options at the top and then I've got menus down the side. So you need to do two steps here to set this up. The first thing you need to do is set your service up. So that services is on the left hand side. And if you want to add more staff, more trainers at any point, you would go into the staff section. So let's go into services and you can see I've got an office hours in there. I'm going to add a new service. And this is going to be my event. So almost if you're thinking about this as a training calendar, this is a training course. So I'm going to call it. 
at getting started with the system session. And you can put a description in there. You can put a location if this is a face-to-face -face session or if this is going to be online, add an online meeting. The system will automatically generate a Teams meeting for you and send a meeting link to customers. You need to define how long this event would last for. So this is going to be a one and a half hour session. So that's absolutely fine. And I'm not going to worry too much about buffer time because I'm not going to allow people to book these in my diary. I'm going to define when these are generated. So I'm not going to worry too much about buffer time. That's really when you've got, you're opening up your calendar for people to book in small sessions based on the availability that you gave them. But this is more about you generating those sessions once you've created that event or that service. So don't worry about buffer time. I'm not going to worry about price because it's an internal event. I've got a note section and then I need to define how many people can book on this course because it's not just an individual piece. I'm going to put 10. And then I can let customers manage their appointment when it was booked by you or your staff on their behalf. Yeah, I'm fine. If someone struggles and then we book them on the course, but they want to then manage themselves off, that's absolutely fine. We'll let them do that. And you can see I've got a language option. Now, before I press save changes, I need to go back up to the top and go to the left hand side. because I've got more options here and you can go in and dive in and have a look at these. But let's have a look at some key ones because there are tons. And again, you can change all of these at any point. So don't worry too much. If it doesn't behave the way that you want it to go back in and make a change. I always do a bit of a test and a trial to see if it behaves the way I want it to. So let's have a look at availability options. Again, I don't need to worry too much about this. The only thing I do need to worry is the minimum lead time. So this means that this course, this session, this event will be available up to one day before it's due to start. So people will stop being able to book on it at that point. Now that's the only policy that's relevant for the type of calendar that I'm generating. And I'm just going to change that from the availability to bookable when staff are free to not bookable. So that it's not going to be just a standard calendar where people can go and select a time when I'm free because I'm going to define those times. So the availability should be set to not bookable. And then if I go back to the left and assign the staff, I'm going to select myself. And just be aware as well, I need to take off, allow customers to choose particular staff for a booking. So I've got myself on there. I can also customize the field. So when people are booking on this course, I can see I've got this required information. Now, some of this might not be relevant because I don't really need the phone number. It's not required. I don't really need the address or the notes, but I probably want the email. But I can also add customized fields to gather more information. So if I add a customized field, you can see I've got the diff I've got the option of a text question or a drop down question, and I can then define how I want them to add that. So I can add more information. I can gather information about previous training, about what group or team they're in, or all sorts of stuff like that. And I can do that here within the service. So I'm almost creating that master event and then I'm going to create sessions from it. And you can also dive into notifications as well and decide how your learners, how people who attend your events are going to be notified, reminders and things like that. And you can set those up and edit them so you can customize them, which is really useful. So dive into all of those options when you're setting up this service or this event. And then when you have it, click on save changes. So now I've done that, you can see I have that event, that service there really nicely. So I have created my booking page, which gives a link for people to go and see all of my services, all of my sessions. I've created that service. So I've created that high level event. And now I need to create that session. And to do that, I'm going to book the appointment. So I need to make sure I'm in services on the left hand side. I've selected the event that I want. So getting started with the system 
And then on the right hand side here, you'll see towards the top book appointment. And I'm going to book an appointment. And this is a really simple one. You can see it's already pulled some information in. I can see it's going to be a Teams meeting. I've got 10 seats to book. I can change the amount of attendees there. And then I just need to define when this is going to run. So I'm going to run this session on Thursday at, let's say, 11 a.m. And now it knows it's an hour and a half, so it's chosen my end time, which is really useful. You have got more options, but probably you just want to keep it as simple as that. To the right, you can see the staff. So I'm going to tick on it myself. If you had a number of people that could run this session, make sure they're set up as staff in your bookings calendar. And then you can select who you want to run this session and they will obviously get the invite as well. If I scroll down, you can see I've got a few options. Don't send customer an email confirmation. Well, I want them to have that. Let customers manage their appointment and send a meeting invite to the customer. Let's tick that one. So I can decide who. A few different settings down at the bottom, which is really helpful. But this is just basically setting up that session with all of that service detail, all of that event information in there. And I'm just going to create that booking. So that's now booked. That's in the system that is now a session that people can book on before we go and have a look at it let's just book another one so let's just get another session in the system and let's do that for friday at let's go for nine at 9 30 a.m select myself again make sure my settings at the bottom are how i want them to be and click on create booking so i've got multiple sessions that people can book on Okay, what I want to do now then is I want to just have a look at that booking page. So let's just click and open that up. So this is the booking page that your users will see. You can share that booking page with them really nice and easy. If I just go back to that tab, what you'll see if I go to booking page there on the left hand side you can see I've got all of my share options at the top and I can again make some changes I can customize my page things like that because right now mine is really nice and simple and you can see I've only got this one service so if you've got multiple courses that you want to deliver on multiple sessions then set up multiple services and then define your appointments your sessions within those so getting started with the system is the only one that I can select. And then you can see I have in my calendar here, I can select on the 29th or the 30th and the time changes. And if I click on that time, then the users will be able to fill in their information. You can see only the name and the email is mandatory. The rest of it isn't. And you, they will just click on book and that appointment, that Teams meeting that's created in the background will come to them and it will be on my calendar because I've been set up as the trainer, as the owner of this session. So really simple and easy to do. It's just three steps that you're going to do. You're going to set up your shared booking page. You're then going to create services for each of the, set, the events that you want to run. And then you're going to create appointments for each of the sessions. And obviously, you can just keep going in and creating brand new appointments to build out your calendar of events and then you shared booking page which you can link from here you can embed it you can email it you can change who can access it remember like I said nothing is set you can change it when you need to the only thing you need to remember is you cannot delete these booking pages once you create them it would need to be your administrator that does that so you need to speak to IT within your organization but you can go ahead there and make changes and do everything you need to do and dive into all of those pieces as well. So really simple to get started with. If you want to use this for a training calendar, an events calendar, anything else, and you want people to manually book on them, you can obviously change that amount. You can have more than 10 people. I just selected 10 people. But you can see there now, these are the sessions that have been booked nice and high level. I can see how many people have booked on them and when they are and all of that detail and I've got my three dots to edit view and also cancel if I want to cancel that session 
So really simple and easy to dive into. Have a play around with that. If you get stuck in anywhere, then please just add a message in the comments and I'll see if I can help you out. But I would just go around and play with this system and see what works for you and set up some dummy sessions and get some of your team members, your colleagues to book on them to see how they behave with your outlook and their outlook and things like that. That's how I did it. I just tried it out a few times and I defined what worked best for me and then you can go ahead and set that up from there onwards and any new courses you can add as services and then you can add sessions with the book appointment piece. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and let me know what videos you'd like me to record next.